for a staff report, please. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. Serena Dolly, staff to the committee. Senate Bill 5198 concerns the sale or lease of mobile home communities in the property on which they sit. The committee heard the companion bill, House Bill 1129, back in January. This bill does contain a number of changes from the bill you heard. Uh, a couple of brief reminders as background. Uh, first, a landlord must provide a notice of sale to each tenant, the Department of Commerce, and other entities within 14 days of publicly offering a community for sale. And a landlord intending to sell a community is encouraged to negotiate in good faith to sell to a tenant organization or another organization who intends to preserve the community. Landlords must also provide tenants with at least 12 months notice before closing a community or converting it to another use. Senate Bill 5198 does two main things. First, it modifies the notice of closure requirements by extending the notice period from 12 months to two years. The two-year notice period may be reduced to 18 months if the landlord provides relocation assistance of at least 15,000 for a multi-section home and 10,000 for a single-section home or to 12 months if the owner provides the relocation assistance and also compensates the tenants for the loss of their homes. Second, the bill establishes a process for tenant and other eligible organizations to purchase a community. Once a landlord provides that 14-day notice for sale, uh, it triggers a process where tenants have the opportunity to form a qualified tenant organization or work with an eligible organization to make an offer to purchase the community. The bill specifies uh, timeframes in which certain actions must be taken by the tenants and the landlord and requires both parties to negotiate in good faith. A landlord may simultaneously consider purchase offers from other parties subject to the rights of the tenants. And finally, a city or county may not enact or enforce ordinances that regulate the ability of tenants to compete to purchase a community unless that ordinance was in effect prior to May 1st, 2023. I'm happy to take your questions. Already questions for staff? Seeing none, Senator Frame, it's good to see you, welcome. Likewise, thank you. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair, Mr. Ranking Member, and esteemed colleagues of the Housing Committee. For the record, State Senator Noel Frame from the 36th District. Um, here with a good little Senate bill that, Mr. Chair, is actually a good House bill disguised as a, a Senate bill. <laughs> um, and I jokingly say that um, because this bill is about manufactured home communities, of which I don't have a single one in my district. Um, so I just want to thank um, the good Representative Gregerson, who has worked on this issue for years and sponsored the House Companion. Um, and just really pleased to be bringing the bill together at this point um, as a, a compromise, as an agreement between uh, tenants and landlords alike, uh, and a bill that got out of the Senate on a bipartisan vote and even got some good floor speeches out, uh, by some of the no votes. You always gotta love that. Um, but Mr. Chair, the reason this is so important, um, folks that live in our manufactured or mobile home communities, which is in some cases kind of an oxymoron, some of these um, homes don't actually move, um, it's a really unique part of our housing stock that's affordable and tends to be occupied um, particularly by senior citizens and because of the unique dynamic of folks owning the building but not the land on which it sits, um, there are tenants that are particularly vulnerable when you have uh, sales of these manufactured homes or changes of use. Um, so this has been worked on for years. I certainly had a front row seat to this as a, a member of previous iterations of this committee as a House member. And so again, just delighted that there, this is a great compromise um, to provide a little bit more security um, to the tenants, give them a chance to organize and have an opportunity to compete to purchase, have a little bit longer of a timeline um, to figure out where they wanna move that manufactured home if there's a change of use. Um, so I commend the bill to you, and I want to say thank you, Serena, is a great member of the team. Miss you, and thank you for the great briefing. Back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator. Any questions for the good Senator? All right, seeing none, thank you. Or if not... This is Ann Sadler. Hello, it's nice to see you. Go ahead, go ahead with your testimony. All right, thank you so much. Good afternoon, Chair Peterson and members of the committee. My name is Ann Sadler and I live at Bayview Senior Mobile Home Park in Mount Vernon. I'm the president of the Association of Manufactured Homeowners, also known as AMHO. I'm here in support of and pro Senate Bill 5198. 
Over the past three months, AMHO has reached out to manufactured homeowners targeting their most pressing needs via a survey on our website and also via mail and email. We found that our homeowners wanted to prevent the land under their homes from being sold without opportunity to purchase their communities. They also stated that they needed more time to move out of their parks if needed, and that one year was not enough. We received survey responses from homeowners in 67 different manufactured housing communities in 33 cities, ranging from Bellingham to Vancouver, and Ellensburg to Spokane and Walla Walla. 84% of our respondents were over 65 years of age, and at least a quarter are disabled. All they want is the opportunity to enjoy living in their own home, in their chosen community for the rest of their lives. Senate Bill 5198 provides them with their best hope for that, as it encourages a community owner to sell to the residents or an eligible organization, or in the worst case scenario that a community is closing, it gives the displaced homeowners time to make good decisions about where they will move to, as they will most likely not be able to take their homes with them. Please support Senate Bill 5198 out of respect and compassion. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. And next, uh, Stacy Valenzuela. She is muted. Valenzuela, if you could unmute. Try again. Yep, there you are. Okay, good afternoon, Stacy Valenzuela, District 1. We need the help that Bill 5198 provides to keep our most vulnerable neighbors in their homes sheltered. Practices are sweeping across Washington State without notices of sales of manufactured home communities to investment corporations. They're purchasing, then notices of sale and high rent increases arrive. These are homes purchased and how seniors, veterans, those with disabilities, low and fixed income that live unsubsidized. Rent alone is 60 to 100% of our fixed income with nowhere to go. We found that these non-public sales already happened to several other mobile home communities. We also know that this is currently happening to three additional manufactured home communities. Our city, did pass a mobile home community zoning in 2019. However, if House Bill 1100 had passed last year, our homeowners would be happier, less stressed, and in negotiations to become a residential owned community. What do we do when good faith is not followed? We need action. Where are our heroes? You could be that with passing 5198 to protect other extremely low affordable housing communities from suffering these consequences. Please adopt 5198. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much for your testimony. And lastly in this panel, Carolyn Hardy. Good morning, I mean, afternoon, Chairperson. Peterson and members of the committee. My name is Carolyn Hardy and I live in a manufactured housing community and am the secretary of our tenants association here at Leisure Manor in Aberdeen, Washington. We moved into our mobile home in 2008 with dreams that this was our forever home. In 2021, bad news hit our community that the park had been sold. We had no notification to a large property management company. Shortly after the sale, we came home to a note on our door that rent would increase $150 and we would be responsible for our garbage service, another $28 a month for garbage pickup, $178 a month increase, a 40% increase a month. Wow. We own our home, but lease the land it sits on. 
it's time the government take a stand. Our home cannot be moved. Rent increase has turned our joy to dread, worrying that the next increase will force us to find a new place to live. Maybe in our car. We should have bought a bigger car. We truly are scared. Some neighbors have sold their homes and moved in with their children or moved to subsidized housing, which has two year waiting lease at least. We've worked hard for our 55 years. We are in fixed incomes. We saved, been value members of your community. We earned our forever homes. Please don't let the landlords take away our homes and kick us to the street. We are hoping our community can be preserved with the help of Senate Bill 5198, since it would allow us residents or an eligible nonprofit to purchase the land if the owner wants to sell it. And then we could keep the rents affordable in the future. Please give Senate Bill 5198 your full support. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I think we have a question from Representative Levitt. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. The 40% increase that you received, was that an immediate increase the next month or were you given a period of time in which that notice would have increased your rent? We're given 90 days. Thank you. Any further questions? All right, seeing none, thank you again uh, for sharing your story and taking the time to testify. Uh, next up, we will go right here in person uh, with Brad Tower and Mike Hoover. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, whoever wants to go. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. I'm Mike Hoover here today on behalf of Detente Management, which owns and operates several communities throughout the state. And I am bravely signed in as other because, of course, I am. Uh, but that is because this is a tough bill for us. We are never going to love this bill. Uh, it is a tough one. We have friends on all sides, but I am here to testify in favor of the compromise that was worked out. And I think a lot of folks deserve credit for that as the sponsor alluded to. Uh, Representative Gregerson, I think, kicked all this work off. The, the good uh, uh, ranking member participated. You yourself participated. I think it was a good start. So strangely, although this is a Senate bill, I kind of feel like it's a House bill. Um, what we do get out of this, although we are not real thrilled with it, it and is certainty. If I had to guess what both the tenants and the landlords want, what they have in common is certainty. We want to know what the process is. We want to know how it works. We want to know who is doing what when. This is not a perfect process, but what we are getting out of it is certainty. And what I think the tenants are likewise getting out of it is certainty. So on that basis, we definitely commend it to you. It was a pleasure to work with many of the stakeholders. I don't know if it was a pleasure for them, with, for them to work with me, but we tried. Mm -hmm. We came together and we made a, a, we, we made a lot of uh, negotiations, a lot of changes from what you saw in 1129. And I think we've come a long way. So it is, it is a bipartisan bill at this point, and I would commend it to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. For the record, I'm Brad Tower here today on behalf of Commonwealth Real Estate Services. Commonwealth uh, specializes in managing affordable housing options, in particular manufactured housing communities. And we work with ownership groups from uh, tenant groups to individual owners to investor groups. Uh, and speaking similarly to my colleague here, I, we are signed in other, but we believe that what's on the table in front of you represents a good faith effort to get to a workable solution for all parties. And as such, we are grateful to uh, both the House sponsor and the Senate sponsor for getting to that point. One comment I wanted to make um, is that as we've gone through this conversation, oftentimes we've conflated the idea of the sale of a property with the closure of a property. And in our experience, sometimes in order to avoid the closure of a property, a sale of the property is needed. So it's important that this bill contains provisions that allow for um, a certainty, as, as Mr. Hoover had said, in the process for both uh, an entity who is looking to sell and the various bidders that may be interested in buying the property. And with that, I take any questions. Thank you. Any questions for this panel? All right, seeing none, thank you for the work. Much appreciated. Uh, next up, we have uh, some folks joining us remotely. Staff, if we could bring in Ann Campbell, George Hurst, and Karina Feel. And we'll start with Ann Campbell, if she is available from Department of Commerce. 
Good afternoon, Chair Peterson and members of the committee. I am Ann Campbell, the Managing Director of the Homeownership Unit with the Department of Commerce, and I'm signed in as other on Senate Bill 5198. We are very supportive of this bill as it would give a two-year notice of a closure or conversion from a landlord to the community tenants. We received closure notices for 11 communities between August 2021 and September of 2023. Three, Commerce is notified of planned community closures and our response team provides direct client services to connect with residents and owners once we receive that notice. In addition, we work to provide residents with application information and connect them with resources available as they transition from their homes. We do have a slight technical technical recommendation to improve the bill. We recommend adding language to the bill requiring the notice to vacate includes the Department of Commerce contact information identifying financial and technical assistance programs that are available to support tenant relocation activities for both the residents as well as the owners of the communities. I am happy to answer any questions and thank you for this opportunity to testify. Great. We have a quick question uh, from Representative Entman. Thank you. Is the only reason why the Department of Commerce is testifying as other is because you're not included in as a resource, or are there other issues that make the department testify as other? Thank you so much for the question. And the reason that we are uh, uh, signed in as other is because this is not governor uh, 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 sponsored legislation. And as a cabinet agency, uh, we must abide and follow the governor's direction. Uh, otherwise, there are no other objections with this bill whatsoever. Great, thank you. And next, uh, let's bring in Linwood City Council member George Hurst. This is the Snohomish City Council members all coming down to say hi to me. So, um, George, good very to good. See you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair Peterson Committee. My name is George Hurst, and I'm a member of the Linwood City Council, and I'm speaking in support of Senate Bill 5198. This bill is needed so that tenants can be provided as much notice as possible when the property of a manufactured home community is being sold. I want to tell you about what happened in Linwood during 2022. Last June, a small mobile home park in our city consisting of 30 units was put up for sale and a 60 day notice of end of tenancy was given to the residents of the park. All 30 of these units provided affordable low income housing for the tenants. The majority of the tenants were working poor families, senior citizens and folks on disability. I visited the site and I was made aware that 16 tenants were desperate for assistance in finding housing. It took months of extraordinary efforts by the Snowish County Human Services Department, the YWCA, and the Snowish County Housing Authority to find temporary housing for these 16 tenants. As far as I know, eight months later, six of the tenants have yet to find permanent housing. This bill will provide the much needed long-term notice of sale for tenants of a manufactured home community. Please pass this bill out of committee. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Um, and next, uh, Karina Field from the Kenmore City Council. Council member, welcome. Thank, thank you. Good morning, Chair Peterson and members of the committee. I'm council member Karina File from the city of Kenmore here today to testify in pro support of Senate Bill 5198. Kenmore has several mobile home communities with our city, and we have taken local actions to protect residents of mobile home communities. We support additional policies, including Bill 5198, for several reasons, and I'd like to highlight the top three. First, this policy will protect affordable housing. Many people who live in manufactured and mobile home communities do so because it's one of the very few options, housing options available to them. By requiring a landlord to provide two years notice before closure or conversion, tenants will have more time to find alternative housing that will also be affordable. And second, this bill will help prevent displacement. When a manufactured mobile home community is closed or converted, tenants are often forced to relocate, which can be a very traumatic experience. Providing ample notice gives tenants opportunity to plan and prepare for that transition and may help prevent displacement altogether. And third, this bill promotes fairness. 
Tenants in manufactured mobile home communities often invest substantial amounts of money into their homes, only to find themselves at the mercy of landlords who decide to close or convert a community without any warning. By requiring notice, this gives tenants the measure of fairness these, to these situations that's provided to them with the time to make informed decisions about their futures. And for these reasons and many more, the city of Kenmore supports Senate Bill 5198. And I would say as a behavioral and social health services specialist, when we take targeted universal approaches to solving, uh, so providing innovative solutions to solving the drivers of uh, homelessness, we can improve outcomes for, for individuals and communities. And I, I really appreciate your time. Um, I'm available for any questions if you have any. Thank you very much. Any questions for either of the council members or commerce? Nope, seeing none. Thank you again for taking the time. And staff next, we have, uh, oh, we're in person. Devin Gombowski and Robert Cochran. Devin's here, maybe is Mr. Cochran online? Yes, he is. Okay, we'll bring him in, but. Evan, go ahead. Chair Peterson, if it's all right, I'd like to yield my time to Robert first. All righty. And it says right here on my list that he's calling in remotely, but he'll teach me to read. All righty. <clears throat> Good afternoon, uh, Chair Peterson and honorable members of the committee. Uh, for the record, I'm Robert Cochran here for Contentful Mobile Home Park. We are an independent family-owned mobile home park in Spokane, and our community has been under the same ownership for 47 years now. Um, and there are hundreds of others like us in the state. Uh, we are opposed to Senate Bill 5198 in its current form. Uh, for the first time in 15 years, Contempo Mobile Home Park has been left out of the stakeholders' negotiations, uh, like for this bill, 5198. And that means hundreds of others like us were left out as well. Um, just so there's no mistake, we support the concept of helping those most vulnerable who live in manufactured housing communities. Uh, the problem is the solutions presented in 5198 are the same ones each year since 2007 that puts the entire burden on landlords. We would like to see proactive solutions centered around educational materials for mobile home communities to organize ahead of time if they have an interest in buying the community they reside in, um, there are good solutions outside of the box. I've got many, you'd be surprised how progressive my ideas are. Um, the state's housing crisis was created by many factors, but existing manufactured housing community owners are not one of them. Uh, 5198 will create more disincentives for development of our form of non-subsidized affordable housing that this state needs. Um, we'll be happy to work with the committee on any amendment language to improve this bill, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you, you going to go too? You can. You got time. You guys have any questions for Robert first? Any questions? No. I can go first too. Okay. Or I can go. Yeah. Whatever you would like to do. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chair Peterson and honorable members of the committee. For the record, my name is Devin Gomboski. I'm here also with Contempo Mobile Home Parks. Um, as Robert just mentioned, we have been a family operated uh, mobile home park located in the city of Spokane, where we have been for the last 47 years um, when we purchased the property, when it was being to be foreclosed on by a developer. Excuse me, by a developer. Uh, we have always put our tenants first by keeping our rents affordable and including the utility costs of um, uh, water, sewer, and gas with our rents. Um, and we do appreciate the intent of the bill, as Robert just mentioned, and it sounds like there has been uh, lots of wonderful stakeholdering that has been done on the bill. Um, unfortunately, Contempo Mobile Home Park was not included in that stakeholdering, and uh, we are asking for your no vote today, uh, respectfully. Um, at the time, uh, or in a time when our state is in a housing crisis, and we have lots of really interesting uh, housing bills today, like the ADU bill we just heard, or Representative Bateman's uh, middle housing bill, um, this bill creates a disincentive for mobile home park ownership and development, um, and we don't believe that this one-size-fits-all solution is going to work for small, independently-owned uh, mobile home parks. We would ask for a uh, amendment to e exclude existing mobile home park communities who are Washington State residents and who are independently owned and operated and who just own uh, one mobile home park in the state. 
Uh, we would be happy to work with the committee as well as the bill sponsor on language for that uh, if you're interested. Thank you very much for the opportunity to testify today. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, Representative Entman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you for your presentation. My question is, what would the um, limit be on lot size on an independently owned mobile home park? I'm sorry, Representative Entman. I don't have that uh, figure with me right now, but I would be happy to follow up with you in writing uh, later today. All right, any other questions? May I answer? Yes. Uh, technically, there is no lot size for that would be different from a commercial owned mobile home park versus a independently owned park. Some of the independent ones are very, very old. So their lot sizes will be drastically smaller than current building codes might, might stipulate. May I have a follow up, Mr. Chair? Of course. So I think of mobile home parks as, parks as neighborhoods. So how many families live in the neighborhood in the mobile home park that you own? Uh, we've got 217 homes in our community that uh, fall under under the 5920. And of that, I think we've got the majority are single person occupied homes. And then there's, you know, two or three people per other home. Uh, our total population is about 159, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you again for your testimony and feel free to send us that language. And finally, um, if we could bring in Ishbel Dickens. My understanding is that Christine Walker is not available. Okay. Ishbel, you get to wrap us up. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair Peterson, Vice Chairs uh, Leavitt and Alvarado and Ranking Member Clicker and members of the committee. My name is Ishbel Dickens and I have been working with and for manufactured homeowners for 35 years as a community organizer, as an attorney and as the executive director of the National Manufactured Homeowners Association. Now that I am retired, I volunteer with the Association of Manufactured Homeowners, AMO, here in Washington. I am here today in full support of Senate Bill 5198. This is an historic moment. I cannot recall the last time that the homeowners and the majority of the landlords came to an agreement on a bill. It is indeed a testament to the good faith efforts of both sides that I ask you to give your full support to engrossed second substitute bill 5198, which the Senate passed 3117 with one absent. 5198 provides an opportunity for manufactured homeowners or other eligible organizations to purchase a community if the landlord chooses to sell. Certain timelines need to be met in order for this to happen. Timelines that as Mike Hoover has signified, both parties have agreed to. This bill also does not interfere with current law, which exempts the landlord from paying real estate excise tax if they sell the community to the residents or a nonprofit housing agency. 5198 also provides more time if the landlord wants to close the community, which always results in the displacement of the homeowners. As the vast majority of the homeowners will not be able to move their homes to another location, this time is of immense value as they make decisions about where they will live without their homes. 5198 also requires landlords to pay relocation assistance if they want to reduce that length of time that the homeowners are given to move when the community closes. This is a reasonable compromise when the homeowners will lose their largest asset, their homes. And again, this is an agreed to compromise. The compromise bill before you today is stronger than its companion Senate uh, Substitute House Bill 1129, which passed out of this committee with a 10-3 vote in support. I would therefore hope that this version receives unanimous support as it is currently drafted. My sincere appreciation to Representative Gregerson for priming the companion House Bill 1129 and to the members of this com committee, Representatives Peterson, Leavitt, Bateman, Chop, and Reed, who sponsored it. I hope you are pleased with this compromise. Thank you for your serious consideration.
violation of Senate Bill 5198, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much for your determination in getting this great policy through. Any questions to the hardest working retired person? Um, <laughs> All right, seeing none, thank you again uh, for your work on this and everybody for being at the table. Uh, that concludes the hearing on Senate Bill 5198. And if I'm not mistaken, concludes our work for the day. We are adjourned.